So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we have three sizes of Christmas tree skirts in this format. Now I said that there is time markers so the time markers are going to indicate that. So this one here that you're looking at that I did as a final sample is the eight inch. It's the largest one. So we have four, six and eight. This is the very easy pattern to do and I'm gonna do all three sizes separately so you can see the video chapters if you'd like to skip ahead and do the size that you most prefer. Now the size opening is where it's gonna fit in. So your main factor is if you have a live tree, if you wanna feed it with water, you wanna leave a little bit more of an opening here so that you can feed that tree with water as it's um, being displayed for your Christmas season. So the bigger the hole, the more uh, room there is obviously. So without further ado, we're going to go into this. I have diagrams for all three. You can download those to see the video information for that and let's get started on the first size. So welcome to the four inch size. So what we need to do here is that we need to get ourselves started. Now this is a called the crochet diagram if you're not familiar with that and all it is it's double crochets and chains that are used. The secret for this particular concept is that rows number two and three is the repeat over and over and over and see how they start that's the only difference of it. So as it gets bigger there becomes more and more of these shells that are in between the corners. So when you're just working your way around so this time there's only one shell in between the corner but next time there will be a one and two shells into the next one. So you just have to consider that that that's the only change that you have for your size. So when we go to chain this is a chain of 34 and what I want you to pay attention to most is these shells so that you know when to put in the corners and that's just a really helpful tip for you today. So I used Karen Big Donut as my sample. I used two full balls of this. I was playing yarn chicken for the 40 inch size so just be aware of that. So if you want it any bigger you may need three and etc. And I let the colors change exactly where it wanted to change. So I went from one end to the other and then I grabbed the other ogo and I did one end to the other and that's how I did it. So let's begin to work on the four inch size. Grab your hook. In my sample I wanted it nice and tight so it was using a five millimeter size H crochet hook and I used my Karen Big Donut. On camera I just have some spare yarn left over and I'm using the Karen Colorama with the six millimeter size J crochet hook. It's still transferable. So if you have another type of yarn just match the yarn to the hook. So let's start off with the slip knot and I need you to begin by chaining 34. Remember that the slip knot never counts as one. So one two, three and four, five and go all the way to 34 and meet me back here in just a moment. So I now have 34 chains. So you're going to start by going four chain from the hook and grab the back loop of the chain. So here's one, two, three and this is the fourth and grab the back loop. It'll make the edging look better. So I want you to double crochet into that and this will count with the skip chain that you just did and this double crochet it'll count as two double crochets in this chain. So now we have the two in here. So you're gonna chain one and this is special. So you're only going to skip two stitches this time, two chains and go to the third chain and then that's where your first corner is going to be and in the back hump only of the chain you're gonna put three double crochets to start your corner. chain two to officially turn the corner and in the same chain I want you to put in three more double crochets and that is your first corner. So I told you what's special here is that we skipped over two chains. The rest of it all the way around we're always gonna skip three. So you skip one, two, three and so after you have this corner in just chain one first and just go one, two, three and go to the fourth and put in three double crochet. So one, two and three and don't forget the chain one right after that. So you're always putting in chain ones in between the stitch work. So skip another three. So one, two, three and go to the fourth and do another corner. So in this version, the four inch version, there's only one shell by itself in between the corners when you go to start. So the corners don't forget are three double crochet. chain two to officially turn it and in the same chain 
I want you to put in three double crochet. So one, two, and three. So now chain one, look to the chain and skip the next three. So one, two, three, and the fourth one away is the next shell. So there's three double crochets in that one. So one, two, and three. And don't forget the chain one and then skip three. So one, two, three, and there's only one shell between the corners. So the next one has to be a new corner. So it'll be a three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So don't forget the chain one after that. So skipping three, so one, two, three, go to the fourth. This is the shell by itself. Chain one after it. Skip another three, so one, two, three, go to the fourth and this is another corner. So we have one, two, and three and chain two to officially turn it and in the same chain three more double crochet. So we have one, two, and three and we're coming near to the end. So chain one, skip the next two and that will take you right to the end and in the very last chain I want you to only apply two double crochet. And that took us all the way around. So when you look at it from this perspective, let's just put it down and let's talk about it. So right at the bottom here, just put that in behind, you see that there's one shell by itself. So this one here, it's kind of split in half. So this is considered one even though there's a split. So you see you have one, one and then this is one. So and this keeps the split right directly in the middle. So that was row number one of the four inch size. Let's turn our work and begin row number two and that will be the repeat throughout this whole thing. So two and three. So row number two you're gonna keep revisiting but every time you do row number two there's gonna be more and more spaces in between the corners. So row two when you go to start is chain up three. That's your first double crochet and in this first chain one space right here there's going to be three double crochets in it. So we have one, two, and three. And just as a mental note there was not, it was chain three and then immediately doing this so there's not a space in between here and here technically. Now you're gonna chain one to move on and the corner happens to be next. So you have your corner which you already know is being three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. See now that we don't have to worry about that chain, we don't have to be as cautious to really count. You, just, you can look for spaces. So chain one after that's done and look for the next space. It's right in front of your face. It's right here. So then you'll put in three double crochet there and then chain one after it and then three double crochet in the next one here. So you see last time there was just one between the corners. Now there's gonna be two shells between the corners. And don't forget the chain one after it and then the corners next. So to what you already know, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So really the big deal of this whole thing is to make sure that you start row number two and three. It's how it started is the big deal and everything else is just following suit. So chain one after it and fill in the spaces. So the next space is three double crochet. I'll be changing color really soon automatically through the ball. That's kind of how I did it on my sample. I just went from one side of the ball to the other. So if you've done granny squares this is just a cakewalk for you. So make sure you chain one after it. So there's always a chain one space between the thing, uh, between the shells. So it's a new corner and then chain two and continue with that corner. Make, grow it outward. Chain one and then coming into the next space and you just keep filling it in. So 
So you're hitting another corner. So by this point you should really understand that you're just filling in spaces at this point all the way to the end of the project. So this is a corner. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So how you end a row number two is this way. So you're gonna chain one after the corner. So you'll have more and more spaces in be before you get here. But in this particular case you've chained one. You're gonna come right into the space and put in three double crochet. So the slit side that's open is always a shorter side. So after the three you're in you're not gonna chain one and come to the beginning turning chain here and just immediately in the chain work itself not to a space but just put in a double crochet. So like I said, told you at the beginning of this here this chain three and this double crochet there's no space in between it. It's acting as one and this is the same thing that's happening here. Let's turn our work and do row number three which is gonna be the end of the repeat then. And let's do row number three next. So how you would start a row number three. So if you see it solid like this you know that you have to start it this way. So you're gonna chain up three. That's your first double crochet and in the same one that's coming out of I need you to double crochet into that one. And this puts the two in there and if it looks like you think it's like the first one it is. It's very much similar. So after the two are in chain one to skip and come to your next space. So you will notice is that in one row there's a lot of stitch work right up into the edge and in the other row there's more gapping space. So three double crochet, chain one and the corner happens to be next. So that's what you already know. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Don't forget to put those chain one spaces in between any of the sections on a side except for the corners. They're always chain two to turn. So chain one and this time you have three spaces. You can see it one, two and three. So there will be three. So you don't need to count those. I'm just telling you that's what's gonna happen. So every time you do a pass there will be another extra shell to put in each side. And once you get blasting on this it goes pretty quick. So my goal is basically look for a corner. Now an error that I did do during the prototype is that sometimes when I wasn't paying attention I thought that I had gone all the way around and I said okay this is the end so I'm gonna turn and go back the other direction but I hadn't yet finished it. So make sure that you do keep an eye on that because that may happen to you. And you can always t tell the starting edge is different than a regular corner. But if you're not paying attention like I wasn't um, it can happen. So you're just gonna work your way around and I will meet you at the end of this round in just a moment. This is or at the end of this row in just a moment. It is considered a row because we are turning our work and going back and forth. I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming close to the end of the row. This is row number three and I'm on the corner before the end. And so if you're ever confused how you start it is how you're gonna finish as well. So chain one, come to the space. So there's a space before the edge now. So those spaces will continue to grow. And all you're doing is, is how do you finish it. So if you're ever unsure you can look to the beginning one and see that you did two double crochets in the first one. So what you can do is you can look at that. So in this case you'll chain one and you'll come right to this turning chain and you will apply two double crochet and that was how you would finish a row number three. So now all you have to do is that you just have to go up and turn your work and start a row number two again. So when you turn it around you'll look at it and say okay this is row number two. This is what I did you know down here and this is what I'll do. So I'll chain a total of three and then I'll come into the next space which is right here. Three double crochet, chain one and then you can start the revolution around and when you finish it it will look like this. So you will come in and you'll just come across. You'll put in three double crochet into the space and then chain one and then there will be two double crochet in the top of that turning chain. Let's just quickly review. So if, um, if you want to just weave in your ends you will have to change out your yarn because this is actually bigger than you realize. And any kind of skirts and stuff they take a lot more yarn like it's a blanket because of the size. But just throw your uh, tail ends into the project or into the tapestry needle and just 
glide it in to the same coloring. So go back and forth a total of three times. If this is sitting on the floor, you got pets or you got people that are just kind of grabby. You will want to get rid of your tail ends and you'll want to go back and forth inside the stitch work a total of three times for any of the loose ends that you have and then you can safely cut that down and you don't ever have to worry about it. So you would want to do that with your starting tail as well and this is just a miniature version. So if you have a small tree you can do something like this. So you can grow it out as big or as little as you need and we have those sizes available to you on the article of uh, what's attached to the video description. So without further ado I'm gonna be moving on now to the six inch version and we'll begin fresh in just a moment. So welcome to the six inch version. I am actually filming these in order so I've already done the four inches just a few seconds ago. And so the six inch version last time we were doing this is that we had one shell by itself between the corners. Now I originally when I was designing this I only had two in here instead of three and what happens when you do that is that you end up with this being offset to one side and it's a lot harder to write the pattern. Also people I think would be upset if their slit wasn't in the middle. So what we have here is that the other version that we just did the, the, the four inch only had one and so now it's going to go to a six inch version so the interior of the hole will be much different. So when you look at here this is the four inch version. So this here the interior will get even wider as we begin that and so you can determine what size that you need. As I mentioned in the four inch version I am using Karen Color Rama with a six millimeter size J crochet hook but the original sample was done with a five millimeter size H crochet hook with the Karen big donut. So I'm just using spare yarn just to demonstrate this purpose for you today. So let's begin and let's start with this six inch version now. So let's begin and to do the six inch version you're going to chain a total of 66. So the difference between the other one and this one is that the increase is by 32 stitches or 32 chains. So that's the difference between it. So then the next size when we go to go to the eight inch it'll be increased by another 32 chains. So I've already worked that out for you. So I need you to chain a total of 66. So one, two, three, four, five and go all the way to 66 and meet me back here in just a moment. Now that my 66 are done we're now going to begin row number one. I need you to go four chain from the hook so just count it back from the hook. So one, two and three. Turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It will look nicer and I need you to double crochet there. So with the chains that you just skipped and this double crochet it's considered two double crochet in the beginning chain. That's just a mental reference for you. So now you're gonna chain one and now this is special only just for this moment is that you're gonna only skip two and then you're gonna go to the third chain and put in three double crochet which will be your first shell. So one, two and three. So when we did the four inch version this next one that we just did would have actually been a corner. So you have the three in there so chain one. So you'll always chain one after a group except for if it's a corner. The corners um, are different. So you're going to skip three. So one, two, three and the next one is your first corner. So your corners will then always be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. I made the repeat pretty easy for you to be able to follow mentally so you don't have to pay attention closely to the pattern. So when you get that corner done you're going to chain one and then go back to your chain and skip a three. So remember the two that we skipped here is only at this point and we'll be doing that at the very end of this row but that's the only time it happens. So one, two, three skip and then you're going to double crochet into the next chain a total of three times so it's your shell. So in this sample you have a total of three shells that are in between each corner. So you'll chain one, skip the next three. So one, two, three go to the fourth and shell again. So three double crochets equals a shell. Chain one and how many shells can you count between before the last corner? It was two. So we need a total of three. I always find to know that helps me so that I never get confused on where I am in the pattern. So it's those visual cues that you can do in tutorial work like this that can help you. So chain one. So we now have three done since the last corner so we know that the next one has to be a new corner. So skipping three, one, two, three, go to the fourth and begin your corner. So it's three double crochet, 
chain two, three double crochet all within the same chain. And that gives you that perfect 90 degree turn that you want. And then you're gonna start a new side. So chain one after it and then skip the next three and the fourth one away will be a new shell. And so you're creating these shells going across. So remember that there's three in a row. So this is one of three, chain one just to, before you go. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, shell again, chain one after it, skip another three, go to the fourth and do another shell. Chain one and then the next one here you're skipping three and the next one has to be a corner because you have three shells that are already done since the last corner. So the fourth one away is a new corner so three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So chain one and now you're going to do another side. So skip one, two, three, go to the fourth and do three shells again in a row with the chain ones that separate them. So chain one, skip another three. So I had a question on YouTube this morning. It's like why am I doing that on the back loop? It makes the beginning edge look a little bit more better in my opinion. It's something that I learned in my journey. So chain one, skip another four, you have another one. So you know you find what you know to, and love and you and you do it, right? So sometimes what works for me doesn't work for others. So you have to keep in mind that this is your stitching journey as well. So it's chain one and now you're skipping another three and this must be a corner because three shells were just now put in before the last corner, before, uh, since the last corner. So this has to be a corner. So chain two, three double crochet and now we're coming up to near to the end. And this is gonna be the short side. So the slits, the slit sides are always shorter. So chain one, skip another three and put a shell into the fourth one away. Then chain one, skip two Remember that's a special so skip only two and put in two double crochet into the very last chain. And that will take, that would have taken you now to the end of row number one. So when you lay it down you should have a total. Let me just back you out a little bit here. You should have your four corners like this with your slit right in the middle like this. And now you're ready for row number two and three which is the repeat for the remaining of your skirt. So when you pick it up you're gonna do row number two. So you'll repeat row number two and three over and over and the only difference is, is that it's gonna get bigger between the corners. So what you're paying attention to the most is how you're starting row number two and three and those are different between each other. That's why there's two different rows for a repeat. So you look to the row below if you're ever unsure and it kind of gives you a clue on what you need to do. You'll notice that the space is pretty close to the edge here. So that might be an indication to help you. And let me just bring you in a little closer here. And you're gonna chain three. So one, two and three. So once you get this double crochet in you immediately just put in a shell into this first space. Noticing that I chained only three. I did not chain four. So that means that these four double crochets that I'm putting in that I have here. So there's one here. The chain three counts as one and these three are considered solid. There's no spaces in between them. So always remember that. And that's on the beginning of this side and also on the end. So now you're just gonna pick up what you already know. So just chain one and skip to the next space. So these spaces get more and more by, by a factor of one per uh, side when you're going for each one of these rows. So chain one and you happen to run into a corner. So the corners are three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. 
A thing that you need to keep an eye on during the prototype as I talked about when I did the four inch version is that I thought I'd gone all the way around and I turned prematurely. So just keep an eye and make sure that you do hit the end of the row before turning around. So now you're gonna start a new side. So chain one and then just look for the spaces and fill those in. So you see that you have one, two, three and four. You don't need to count them. You just gotta know that they're there before the corner. So you'll put in three double crochet and then you'll chain one after it and then jump to the next one and then eventually you'll hit the corner and then you'll turn the corner and continue it around. I'm gonna see you at the end of this uh, round in or at the end of this row in just a moment. I'll show you how to finish a, uh, row number two and then we'll start row number three because that's different on how it starts and ends and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around here and I'm just filling in the space before I'm thinking about the edge and if you're ever unsure and I'm changing color on the ball by the way it's just on its own is that if you're ever unsure on how you start is how you finish. So I'm chaining one I'm coming into the space and you can see that there's not a lot of stitch work left after the space is done. So in the turning chain you were going to apply one double crochet. So please notice that I did not chain one after I did that and that looks like the very beginning other than the color. So let's turn our work and begin row number three. So in row number three it's gonna start off different and again the only difference in the rest of it is just that it's just going more spaces. So see how it's more solid here? Row number three is going to look like how row number one was. So you're going to chain three and in the same one you're coming out of I need you to double crochet. And now you'll chain one to provide a space that you'll use for next time and then you'll come right into this next space with three double crochet. And then you're just gonna go around with what you already know. So you chain one in between and this just means that there's more spaces between the corners because it's getting bigger. So what I need you to look at is that you see how it's space here, no space, space. That's how it will look on the edge work on both, on both sides of the slit. So chain one and do your corner. So continue to do what you already know uh, to the end of the row and I'll show you how to finish a row number three. So when you come to the end of row number three you're just filling in your spaces and what you wanna pay attention to is how you're finishing it at the edge. So if you're ever unsure you can always look to how you started. See how there's two on its own? So you're just going to chain one and skip right to the turning chain and you'll apply two double crochet there. And you don't really necessarily have to look at this one here. You can just look down and see, see you have two here filled in two. So the next one has to be filled in. So to repeat this pattern over and over you just have to repeat rows number two and three and it will continually get bigger and therefore you can do that. Now just to quickly review on how to fasten off just trim your yarn when you're done and uh, I played yarn chicken when I did my version with the Karen uh, big donut version. So just make sure that you have enough yarn in order to play with it and it's like actually doing an afghan with a hole in the middle to be honest with you. So you're just going to just carry it through the same color. Especially if you're laying this on the floor and you've got pads or people that are fiddling at it. So you're gonna just bury the stitch work in here or the tail in and go back and forth a total of three times. So anytime you've changed yarn I'd recommend that you do that. So you can change yarn in the middle of a row too like I did with my, uh, my version and it really is because you're changing colors like this it really doesn't matter where you change it I guess. So you'll wanna do that with the starting here and this would be how you would do the six inch version and you can see when you compare it to the other version. This is smaller and do you see the difference of the holes? And then we're gonna move on to the eight inch section next and let's begin to do that next. So welcome to the eight inch section. So we already have four filmed, six and now it's gonna be eight. So obviously the interior is gonna be bigger. So we have a crochet diagram available to you and what I want you to pay attention to the most is the number of shells between the corners. So in the four size that we did here there was only one shell between the corners. Then the next time in the six inch version there was only three shells between the corners and now the eight inch version has a total of five. So one, two, three, four, five. And so just pay attention to that. Now when you're looking at it from the, this point of view you see there's one, two, 
three, four. And this one here, the split is considered the fifth one. So when you look completely opposite, that's what's gonna happen. So it's just a matter of just chaining more chains and there's more spaces between the corners as we begin. And the row number two and the three is the same as the, um, the starting as doing the four and six version. It's just a matter of getting the right stitch counts in the very first time. So I'm using Karen Color Rama as just my uh, spare yarn with a six millimeter size J crochet hook. The original sample was done with Karen Big Donut with a five millimeter size H. And these are Karen Color Rama that you see here that I'm just playing with with spare yarn that I have on the side. Let's begin to work on the eight inch version now. So creating a slip knot to begin, I need you to chain a total of 98. So the increase from the last time is there's an extra 32 chains. So if you wanted a 10 inch space, you can just add 32 chains to the 98 and there will be um, two more shells between the corners. So there will be seven instead of five. So let's just chain now 98. So one, two, three, four, and five. Go all the way to 98. Meet me back here in a moment. So I now have 98. You'll notice that the chain feels like it's pretty long but once you start boxing it off it actually is not as long as you th think it may be. So we're going to start off and you're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So count it back. So one, two, three and turn it over and get the back hump of the fourth chain. So this double crochet that I'm applying in now plus this skip chain is considered two uh, double crochets into the same stitch. Now you're going to chain one. So now this is special. You're only gonna skip two stitches. It's the only time you do it. Skip two chains and you're going to put in a shell work. So the shell is three double crochets into the same space or chain. And so you'll do that. So it's gonna get bigger. So you're gonna chain one. You're gonna skip now three. So the rest of it you're gonna skip three until you're at the very end of this row. So skip three and you're going to apply another shell there. So if you've been following all three samples, you will notice that there's an extra shell here that wasn't in um, the six inch version and then there's two extra shells that was never in the four inch version. So it's bigger. So chain one to jump and you're going to skip three and the next one in the fourth one is gonna be a new corner. So it'll be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And this is your first corner of the four. So now what I want you to pay attention to is the number of shells between the corners going from this point. So skipping, so chain one first before you do anything and skip just three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and apply a shell. And you want a total of five of these shells that will stand before you get to the next corner. So it's easier to count those than anything. So chain one after it and skip another three and put in a shell into the fourth one. So this will make it then two shells since your last corner and you want a total of five. So chain one, skip another three and put in another shell. This is the third one of a group of five. Chain one, skip three and do another shell. So when I do stuff like this, I just, I'm more counting the number of shells between before, after the last corner to help me know where I am. So now this is the fourth time there's a shell. So chain one, skip another three and this will be the fifth shell that will stand in, in, in between the corners. So chain one after it. So you can see now there's five. So now the next one I'm gonna skip three will, should be the corner. So there'll be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet all in the same chain. And now you're going to work down another side and there needs to be five standalone on that too. So chain one after this, skip another three and go to the fourth and put your five in a row like you had been before with the spaces of the chain one spaces in between. I'll be quiet as I do it because it's just a repeat with what you already know.
So now I can see my five, chain one, and so skipping the next three, this must be the new corner. So two, uh, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So then I start another side and again it'll be five in a row with the chain ones that separate them. So I'll do that quietly again. So I now have another grouping of five and now this is a new corner and I'm coming up near to the end of the chain as well. So that means that this is gonna be the shorter side of the, of the slit area. So if you recall in how you did it when you started, you're gonna end in the same way. So chain one to skip or chain one to skip over. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. And so there's gonna be two complete shells to finish this with a chain one in between them. So that was one, skipping another three. There's another complete shell. And how you finish row number one is that you are going to chain one, skip only two. It's the only time you do it except for the when you started this row and the very last chain there will be two double crochets in it. And that got you all the way around for row number one. And you, when you lay everything out, let me just back you out a little bit because you're a little close. And it's a much bigger one. When you lay it all out, you can see that this hole is much bigger than the ones that we have been doing earlier in this tutorial. So I need you to turn your work and we're gonna do row number two. Row number two and three is the repeat pattern. So the only difference is, is how you start. And uh, so let's begin row number two. You're going to chain three. That'll be your first double crochet. And you're gonna look immediately to this next space and you're going to apply three double crochets there. Now please note that I chained three and then I immediately put in three double crochets here. That means that there's not a space between this chain three and this. That's intentional. So in one row you'll have like the space right here and then it will be solid. So the next time in row number three there will be this new space again. So you're going to complete the rest of this as you already know it. So just chain up one. I'll take you to the first corner and then we'll talk. So then you just fill in the spaces now. You don't have to worry about chaining or counting those chains. Just look for a space. And you turn, make sure you chain one in between them. But you turn once you hit a corner. The thing that you need to know is make sure you get all the way around before turning. Um, it's conceivable because I did it is that um, sometimes I thought I was all the way around and I turned on, the, on a corner like this and I turn, I'm like oh I got more to do. So just keep an eye and make sure that when you turn around um, that you're actually finished a row. So your corners are three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So that's what you already know and you're gonna continue to fill in the spaces in between and each time you complete a row there's an extra space that's being added each time. You don't need to count it. You just gotta fill in the space. So chain one and do that. So I'll see you at the end of row number two in a moment and how you finish row number two is unique and then I'll show you row number three which will be the end of the repeat and I'll be back in a moment at the end of row number two in a second. So I'm coming up to the end of row number two. You can see that the color did change while I was off camera. And that just naturally came out of the ball that way. It's kind of the appeal of this long self striping yarn. So you're just filling in the spaces just leaving a chain one in between them. So each time you do a side it just increases by one but I wouldn't care about counting it because it, it'll just happen. So when you finish a row number two style you're going to come in in this space right here. 
it's the last space available to you. And like we started with just a double crochet and then uh, putting in three into the beginning. How we did it, do you see that? We're gonna finish it the same way. So you got your three and so in your turning chain you are going to apply a double crochet. Please note that I did not chain one after this three and one in there and so that makes it solid. So you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number three which will be the final of the repeat. So when you start a row number three type, see how that it's thin here and then a space? This is solid so we're gonna go come back to what it looks like here to keep the balance. So you're gonna chain three and in the same one that that's coming out of, I want you to double crochet into the same one. And now you're gonna chain one to skip and then come to the next space. So your edges will always look in the same configuration so you'll have like a small section with the space, a full section, a small with the space. So the next one has to be full and then small and then full and small. And it's just a matter of keeping count. So you just have to pay attention to how you're starting a row. So you're gonna just fill in the spaces which you already know how to do. And then when there's a corner just two to, uh, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet and that's how you're gonna do it. So I'll see you at the end of row number three to show you how to finish off one of these rows and then you can just repeat two and three over and over and over until you get to the size that you prefer. So how you will finish a row number three is the same way that you kind of started. So let me just uh, untangle this and you see how it's only got a two in there. So when you get this last space done I need you just to chain one and come right into the turning chain and apply two double crochet there. So it should look like how you started. But again you can just look below and you can kind of follow the format. So you had like this small space or small and then a space and then you have a full section and then a space and then you're back to the small section and a space. And you continue to repeat that over and over and over until you're satisfied. So the original sample is about 40 inches. We have the sizes available to you on our website. If you want just follow the link in the more information in this video. Once you're happy with it, any loose ends that you have, I recommend putting it into a tapestry needle and just putting it in and just matching it to the same color of the yarn. So if you just go back and forth, any loose ends including the starting will be the same way. Just dragging it through. Don't change the shape of it by pulling it too tight and go back and forth inside the stitch work until you do it three times and this will prevent it from falling out on you. And you'll wanna do that with any loose ends that you have and you can see that this is much bigger than the others that we had and so when I pull those others off, so this is an eight inch version and then this here was the six inch version. So let me just back you out a little bit here. So, so you see what I'm saying? So you got eight, and then you got six and four. So you have all the different sizes that you could think about and of course if you wanna make it bigger the multiple is multiples of 32. So if you wanted a 10 inch then you'll just uh, add another 32 um, chains to the beginning chain of 98 and then you'll have um, a total of seven of these will stand alone on its own and instead of five and etc. So this is how you do this Christmas tree skirt. It's a nice simple idea and once you get mo uh, moving uh, and understanding the increase it becomes really quite easy and of course it's got the split so you can just slide it under your tree when you're ready. Have a great day. We hope to see you again right here on the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.